Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today is a very special show. We've got a new co-host, um, Inel Vale. Now, welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's also called No Free Will, right? Yes. Um, in right, Manhattan. The, the show, the Manhattan show, right, is called No Free Will. It's it's the live show that I talk about a lot on this show. So we do it together. He produces it. And Anel is also the author of this book that just came out May 20th, the, new t the Newer Testament, The Bible of Unfree Will. Very voluminous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, maybe so maybe too like, voluminous. And and the, the title couldn't help it. I didn't have a free will when I wrote it. So <laughs> well, that's the thing. Too yeah. long. All right, <laughs> all right. This is like um, this show is going to be a causal reality discussion number three. We're just going to talk back and forth about like why f this topic is so hugely amazing and important, and why we don't have a free will and all. All right, and now just let's start us off. Why did you write this book? What what did you want to say? Well, I was influenced to write the book by all this. I mean, can I, is this on camera? I don't know. Yeah, yep. There's a lot of books coming out and articles from England, Scientific American, about how there's a myth of free will. Uh, am I allowed to? Sam Harris. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Your favorite, Jonathan Pierce. This all came out before my book, and I decided to expand on what I felt they were missing. But this topic is very hot right now. Since 2010, there's about seven books out and three cover stories on magazines about how humans don't possess this magical quality of a free will. So I took that information and re repackaged it with my version of it, and I made it even better. Definitely. It's talking about the, the magazine, let's show the magazines because this is really cool. Okay. Uh, this is cover. This, and we, you know, right, we right. didn't make this up. This We're, is like Scientific American Mind. Who is in control? Okay. This came out. It's the May June issue of, of this 2012. It's and this this is the this is the one that started it all. New Scientist is a British magazine. That's only what a year old. This is yeah April April 2011 April 27. So a year and three months. Right. It's called Free Will: The Illusion We Can't Live Without. And so this is historic. You know, never in the history of of the world have major magazines come out with 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 you know, cover stories just explaining the free will is an illusion. And I can only imagine how many more books and cover stories and probably, like you said, Time Magazine or CNN could do a special. The people want to know the truth. Yeah. And the truth is we do not have free will. I mean, that's why the show is no free will. <laughs> Definitely. And, and this is the biggest thing ever. We're going to, like, work on getting somebody to do a documentary. Hopefully we'll, can, you know, we'll be working on that, like, within this next year or so. But all right, so let's um, let's now talk about why this 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 topic is so important. Why it's so important for the world to know that free will is an illusion. Well, first of all, which camera do I look in? Um, Newspapers love to have articles like this when someone does something quote unquote evil. Now, I'm not saying there isn't evil. I'm just saying the evil is faded. So the person had no choice in the matter. Uh, why would someone choose to do something evil if they had a free will? So when someone put someone in hell for the rest of eternity where their soul is going to burn forever and ever. That's a pretty long time. And it's just not true because it wasn't up to them. You know, whatever they did, they couldn't help themselves based on their conditioning. So why is it important? There's no judgment day where, where God can judge a man because his will is not free. So if there is heaven and hell, it's predetermined. So, I mean, you know, it seems very unfair to put someone in hell forever for something they did. And I can get into some other reasons, you know. And, and you're right because, like, you know, religions can do a lot of good things. You know, they create a sense of community for people. They give people, like, basic morals and values. But they can continue to do that without, like, threatening people that if they don't do a certain thing or believe a certain thing, they're going to suffer in hell eternally. And so, now, like... Who would choose... If you had the choice to go to heaven or hell and you had a free choice, who among us would choose to go to rot forever and ever in a fiery hell? I know, and, and a lot of times <laughs> with Christianity, all you, you're supposed to do is just like, let's say, I guess, um, confirm or affirm that Jesus Christ is, is the Savior yeah, or but what if you never even heard his name? I know. Well, what if you're one amongst the hundred, three billion that have come to earth over time that your parents didn't teach you about Christ? You never even heard, so there, you didn't even know there was a choice to be made in the first place. I know, and a lot of, you know, over the decades, you know, since the 50s, 
uh, religions here in the United States have been losing people. You know, people used to go like every week and stuff. It's, it's diminished a lot. So like if they imagine if like churches start, you know, saying to their um, congregations, listen, this is new. We, you know, we thought like for the last 2000 years that we did have a free will. Now science is explaining to us that no free will is impossible, you know, and it would be a major thing. I think it would bring a lot of people back. Well, that's just a religious argument. Yeah, we have the whole cause and effect thing that we can get into with the other re refutation. But with the, quickly on the religion, if God knows everything, people claim that, and, he, and I gave you a choice, and God knows you're going to pick out the left hand versus the right, then you're not capable of picking the right hand. Then if God knows everything in advance, then you can't have free will because you're not capable of picking something because he already knows you're going to pick the other one. So that's another – I mean, there's, those are the worst – let's stick with the simple arguments of the cause and effect because – I don't want to confuse anybody. You know, I want to keep this simple. All right, so let's do this. So, like, All now right. we're going to get into the reasons why free will is an illusion. Well, actually, we should. Why we're doing the show, you know, people will be less depressed if they know they can't blame themselves for any mistakes they've made. That's when, you know. Yeah. So, it'd be a more compassionate, better world. Exactly. Less yeah. arrogance, less envy, less resentment. If you don't have a free will, neither does anybody else. So, you can't rank destinies. And it is what it is. Yeah, All less, right. definitely. All right, so now let's... So now we know why we're doing it. Why don't you define free will? All right. Uh, yeah. Excellent. So free will, you know, the way we've used it for the last couple thousand years <laughs> is like, you know, what we do, think, feel is up to us. There's, there's nothing that's not in our control that is either making these decisions for us or taking part in these decisions. You know, or like another way of saying it is like, that we can override any of the influences in the past, like our learning, what we haven't mm -hmm. learned, our genetics and stuff. And So the definition of free will is that you can make a choice independent of anything you've ever been taught or your genetics. Exactly. It's it, completely crazy. It is. And delusional. It's, it is. It's, it's like the biggest, yes. And therapists try to tell me that, you know, if you're in therapy to live your life within reason, you know, and be rational, and they believe in free will, so... Most therapists, there's nothing more irrational and believe. So how can you listen to anything they say? I mean, <laughs> if I had a free will, I would just do whatever a therapist told me to do and get better. I, whatever I needed, you know, in two seconds. But since I don't have a free will, I can't do it. And at the same time, they're telling me to be rational. And you're, there's nothing more irrational than believing you have a free will. It's, it's just crazy and nuts. I it mean, is. we've got to do something. It's the most insane thing in the <laughs> yeah. world. It truly is. We'd all be blissed out and happy if we had a free will. Well, we'd be a lot I happy. would just choose to say this more perfectly than I already am. I can't. <laughs> I don't know the words. I wasn't taught it. It's not my genetics. I hear you. I did, a, I did an episode called Causal Will Therapy a while back, where it's like... A That's lot genius. Of, Causal Will Therapy. Oh, Let me yeah. write that down. A lot of times, like, the problems we have in life have to do with other people. Like, you know, we've got a 50% divorce rate. Just like mm -hmm. people are constantly blaming each other, you know, for whatever. Or a lot of times we blame ourselves for stuff and then feel guilty and get depressed and all. So Causal Will Therapy is about, yeah, you explain to people, listen, you don't have a free will... Other people don't have a free will. will. Nobody has a free will. That means that, like, this burden, this burden of responsibility is lifted from everyone. So, George, why is this topic, why is it taboo? I mean, we're openly on TV now refuting the crazy notion that humans have a free will. Why is this topic in hiding? Why is it not on Main Street, on CNN or whatever, in a public debate? Why cable access? Why is it taboo? What is, what's wrong with this? planet that people all believe they have a free will and why is it not being taught in schools openly i okay. mean everything else is out i, I see vibrators it. being sold at Dwayne reed now i mean and erectile dysfunction ads on at nine o'clock during yankee games why can't we discuss and if anybody believes in free will and wants to come here and debate us you know you could be a Nobel peace prize winner and believe it. we'll, we'll debate you and we we feel we're undefeated and we'll always be so you you know you better be prepared to debate. Because right. I'll just say everything's a conditioned response, no matter what you say. Well, that's the thing. That's the answer. <laughs> everything's causal. All right, so why isn't this out there? Yeah, why is it taboo and in right. hiding? First answer is, like, things have their time. There was a time, like, bef um, before, like, evolution and Darwin and stuff, you know, people thought, like, that the first woman was taken from the rib of the first man and mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. People thought that the world was flat before Columbus came All along. All conditioned and, responses, yeah. Right, so, like, with this, it... It's just an idea whose time has finally come. Just like it just hadn't, it wasn't, it didn't, people didn't consider it uh, important. And like 
our work, incidentally, this show, the meetup that led to do, doing this show and our two shows, we are what's creating this interest in, in, in the topic. I want to be very clear about that because, like, Sam Harris, like, we're very lucky that Sam Harris wrote his book. Show, show Harris's book again. Three-time... This came out just a few months ago. Three-time um, New York Times bestseller. I don't know which cameras. <laughs> it's all right. This Three is what we're trying to stop. Yes. People condemning other people and stigmatizing so, them for either mental illnesses or doing wrong. Right. Pragmatically, you should blame other people because of what's fair and what's right and how to separate people from society. But to put them and condemn them in hell for the rest of eternity is ludicrous. Exactly. And, and, like, and that's the thing. So people are like, you know, the world has a lot of problems now. We've got, like, climate change. We've got this global economic thing and stuff. We've, we've got problems. And to the extent that we're blaming ourselves and everybody else for, for, for everything, it just makes problem solving, getting things right, that much harder. You know, this is, and, and this is the biggest thing ever because, like, again, just the fact that our humanity is completely deluded about the, the second fundamental fact of human nature. I mean, nothing's bigger than this. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. Because um, the slightest change, I mean, I, we get this question a lot in your meetup, the, that one guy that should remain nameless. Why is this important? How is anything going to change? If you change your mind by 0.0001% and start thinking that there's no free will that can the butterfly effect is something on a smallest level can ripple out and change the whole world. So there'll be more compassion. But the real thing is you won't blame yourself for mistakes. So I think there'll be less suicide and less hating oneself. And I always bring up the case of Bernie Madoff, you know, whose son did commit suicide. If he knew his father didn't have a free will, he he, he still might feel very bad and ashamed. But I don't think he would have killed himself. I don't think he would have felt. So all you have to say is, you know, Mark, your father didn't have a free will because nobody does. And nobody, you know, had a free will want to do something that he, he couldn't, he, he got himself boxed and he couldn't help himself, whatever. He was addicted to this Ponzi scheme. But, but other people may not, especially the son, wouldn't feel so terrible if they knew and were taught that people don't have their own free will. So he would just be upset. But I think we can stop a lot of suicides. That's an excellent point. Because basically, by understanding that we don't have a free will, we make a distinction between feeling the pain of guilt and then having a healthy conscience. In other words, when we do something wrong, you know, and we recognize it's wrong, that's conscience. Okay, we can do that and we can actually feel good about recognizing that it's wrong and then take the vow to not do it wrong again. The problem with free will is like it goes beyond that. It says you did something wrong and what happens is like, all right, how do we learn guilt? We learn guilt as, as little kids. When we do something wrong as a little kid, our parents will punish us, right? Mm -hmm. And then like what happens is like they condition us to like then when we do wrong, see, if we do something wrong and they want us like our, our parents a lot of times want us to feel bad about it right they want us to feel guilty it's conditioning right so like what classical they, or operant and yeah. then then what happens they condition us to then condition ourselves like as right. we become adults that's a very so, good point yeah so like this would this would just you know people would be so much their people's self-esteem would be so much better by, by not having this guilt this this regret and stuff right and then of course it gets rid of arrogance resentment i mean uh you know you could try to do what you think is fair and right and pragmatically live your life though but fundamentally in a divine sense you can't judge anybody because their, their will is not free it's so obvious that's why different countries speak different languages why different regions have different dialects i mean it's you know it's all causal like you say conditioning causal i like this causal will therapy tell me more about causal will therapy all right which you are inventing uh, <laughs> c w t by George Ortega. Causal will therapy. Yes, it's the idea again. Like so many of the problems we have, like depression, for example, somebody does something wrong, they fail at something, they get fired from a job, their their spouse leaves them. You know, people get upset about that stuff, and fine. It's it's sometimes like if you know if you're in a good situ situation, a job, or if you're married with somebody you like, then that's upsetting enough. But what happens is... Oh, if we had free will, nobody would ever get divorced or fall out of love with somebody. Who would ever choose to do that and ruin their marriage or cheat? Absol yes, think about that. Come that's, on. That's a very important point. If we had free will... I was will, married. I didn't want to get... We, we could freely will to, to ourselves to fall in love with whomever and stay in love with them and all. Right. So like 50% divorce rate. We don't have a free will. And the other 50% are miserable. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. Anyway, I don't know. No. I was right. conditioned, uh, conditioned response. All right, whatever. All right, so yeah, causal will therapy. I mean, it's, it's just, it frees us from the burden of insane responsibility. And <laughs> let's get, let's, all right, because like, 
we're going to do a show on this in a couple of uh, episodes, but basically let's talk about this a little now. We're not saying to, to the audience, we're not saying to the world, we don't have free will, that means we can do whatever we want. No, I talk a lot about that in my book, yeah. Yeah. Cause I think people have a fairness imperative, want to do what's fair. I talk about an exchange of energy, but uh, you don't just do whatever you want because you want to do what's fair, and, you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of other reasons, but basically you have to separate the pragmatic from the fundamental and people, if they start doing whatever they want and claim they don't have a free will, they end up in jail. I exactly. Mean, so that'll condition them to live in a terrible, tiny little thing with bread and water and lousy food and dirt and not being able to smoke whenever. So they will be conditioned. I mean, you, you can do whatever you want, but there are consequences. You're still going to end up, still going to be separated out of society. If, if you murder someone and claim you don't have a free will, you're still going to be in jail. And hopefully the, the society will pragmatically and logistically and conventionally blame someone but fundamentally you're not going to condemn the person for you know millions and billions and for, I mean what's infinity for I mean it's crazy forever oh, and ever yeah, your yeah. your soul is burning in hell forever That's eternity insane. is a long time yes. they couldn't help themselves so pragmatically they're blamed but not fundamentally if yes. you can understand the difference right and let's get a That's a huge difference yes yeah. and we can get a little surreal here because like in a certain sense just the fact that we don't have a free will means like and it's not just us <laughs> the whole of, of reality is like a movie everything yes. is cause and effect that's amazing but what's also equally amazing is like we didn't of our own free will choose to get this wrong either so we can't blame us i would never have chosen to be on this stage right now i would just want a normal life but i mean all these things kept happening where i have to talk about this crap i mean not that it's crap but <laughs> it's very important but i i know there's no free will because i if i you know i would rather not be here to be honest but I, it's my calling i can't help it that's the thing that's the thing and so every time i put it away it comes back <laughs> right. i mean i was drawn to your meetup I liked the discussion. I had nothing else better to do those days that we went to the meeting. And then you said the show, and one thing leads to another, like that song by The Fix. So here we are. Yeah, because think about it. To the extent that, like, it's a bit hard to get this, to really wrap yourself around this, like, while most of the world believes in free will. But consider, like, over the next five, ten years, everybody in the world gets this, right? It'll be a brand new world. Yes. Yeah, it'll it'll be, be a new species of humans. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I want to go back to your point about how everything in life is a movie. Some people may call us on our live show or you know, meet us privately and say, if everything's a movie, isn't that very depressing? If it's already pre-made, you know, is that depressing to you? If you don't know the, how it ends. You know, the, the clearest answer, when we go to a movie, right? it's all been done and all. Like, it's like, it's, it's not depressing. We enjoy movies. So we it's how movies. the story is told that exactly. is so engaging. It's, and the other thing is, like, be, just because we don't have a free will doesn't mean, like, we can't, we can't know what's going to happen. So it's like, yeah, it's like... Fine. Right. It's a movie, but we don't know. We haven't seen it yet. So life is just as enjoyable w without a free will as it be with, without all the self blame. And and, and it's more enjoyable because yeah, because we don't blame ourselves or and, others too much. Yeah. And and like a lot of times when we do something great, like incident, we are doing the greatest thing that has ever been done on the planet. I'm, <laughs> so I'm much serious. for getting rid of arrogance. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. And I, can I, 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 you know, I don't even want to use my anyway. <laughs> I can say. I don't this. want to take. I can't really take credit for this. But nor should we be punished for it. Well, that's the thing. We can take credit for it. That, like, if I were to say we're doing the greatest thing ever done under the free will perspective, that would be the height of arrogance. That'd oh, be I like, see who what is this like? Okay. Right, so like, understanding we have absolutely nothing to do with this, you know? So, right, we're just the conduits of God's will, we could say, bringing this forward. We were chosen, just like anybody's chosen to do anything. Some people are famous baseball players or opera singers or, or scientists or... Doctors, we're just going to, we just, this is, this is what's natural for us to do is refute free will. Exactly. And I can't wait to find someone who's famous, who believes in free will and get them on here and debate with them because I need, I think the people need to know. Oh yeah, The absolutely. truth about their wills. And it's getting out there. Again, you know, the two magazine cover stories, the next, we're Atlant, the Atlantic magazine. Had yeah, but a lot of these us. articles like to debate the issue and confuse everyone. We're just telling everybody flat out, there's no free will. This is not a debate. I mean, we could, we'll debate you, but we're not discussing it any longer i mean we want to take the truth to the people Good point. and right. win you know and teach them why there's no free will that's why the show is called no free will we used to have the live free will debate show or something that you know we we evolved out of that because it's not a debate it's not right. open for okay and now it's talking about our manhattan show like our live manhattan show that's still commercial on. oh this could be on either one this right? is yeah <laughs> no, <but you're... laughs> this is... right um our the um Okay, the Manhattan show. I don't know. We got to figure out how this will be this. on there as well. Th right. This is no free will in Manhattan and exploring every, illusion free will. Every in Wednesday night, 11 p.m. on Manhattan. Okay. Sometimes live, sometimes not. Tonight's not live. Don't call. <laughs>
Okay. Right. Um, and again, this is getting out. This is like the New York Times had a, um, an article on this recently. Time magazine had an article on this a few years ago, whatever. But um, the Atlantic magazine, Huffington Post, um, this is getting out there in New the news. New science. Yeah. Show it one more time. Absolutely. That's New from scientist, England. the British jur journal. And Scientific American Mind. I mean, Scientific Just American came out. is one of the most prestigious Who's um, in journals. control? How physics and biology dictate your free will. We, of course, have no association. You know, this is totally coming out. All these books, it's I unbelievable. Wanna, I want to talk about, all right, in, in this talk cover, about whatever you want. They, show. Show them, they show them like this is a puppet, right? Well, we got and the like, same problem with Sam Harris. Right, I know. It's the confusing. Is, like, free right, will. Why does he say so, there is no free will? No, no. no. What I'm saying is, like, nobody wants to Best see seller. themselves... We don't want people don't like to see themselves as puppets, right? Sometimes. Here's like, George's book. He's too modest to. Oh, it's yeah. a great book. I gotta get. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the process of. But writing. the newer testament is better. But. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. We're religious. I need the money to promote it. I, you know, I can't take credit for it, but the movement needs the money anyway. Oh yeah, we're working on that. All right. What were you saying? All right. People, we're religious. Most of us are religious. Ninety percent of Americans are religious. We don't really like to see ourselves as puppets or robots, right? So, what's an alternative to that? We are manifestations of God's will. Yes. That's the thing. We're the Or the universe's will, compelled the by universe. the universe. Exactly. By the way, I always say my famous line, if every moment of the universe is dependent on the moment before, and humans are part of the universe, we don't live outside the universe, now every moment of our lives and brain states, is e it's so easy, it's dependent on the moment before. All right, let's go I mean, through why, that right why, now. It's, this, this, the whole thing is so easy to understand. Why do <laughs> philosophy professors take a thousand pages to screw it all up? They're all, I mean, the circular reasoning has gone out of control on this. I know. that Heisenberg principle, quantum mechanics is indeterminate. I mean, they just, conf so everything's random? What the hell does that mean, everything's random? It's a little scary, because, like, these philosophers, they'll write, like, 20, 30-page papers on this, and they'll get it wrong. And I like Always saying, get it wrong and confuse you. And, and the thing is, like, all right, and then we, the, the question becomes, the Heisenberg how principle can they do this? How can they off. get this wrong? But, but the idea is, like, all right. If everything has a cause, that means every one of our decisions has a cause, and there's a cause to that cause. No, they say in quantum mechanics it's uncaused. I in know. In case it's random. That's not free will either. Right. And, and by the way, they just discovered the Higgs boson particles, so they're discovering new particles every day. You know, it's been 15 years since the last quark, but just last week they discovered, what, the God particle? So how do you know there's not going to be more exactly. undiscovered variables that cause That's everything? That's a good this point. Because, nuts. because the reason sometimes scientists say that something is random is because they haven't found the cause. And that's kind of like, that's Yeah, not that's science. my point, right. No, that's But now science. they're finding another particle. Just wasn't last... It's like last week. They've been looking for, for 10 years, $10 billion in... Was it Switzerland or Sweden? I don't remember. Oh, I don't know. I believe it was CERN? Switzerland. CERN? Okay. So look it up, folks. Higgs boson was just discovered. I think it was... July 4th. Right. So the next one, like, yeah. the, the, the thing... The, There's no end in sight for how many smaller particles you can find. Right. The, the popular kind of, like, scientific experiment that led them to believe that some events were, or, or were random was about radioactive decay. Some radioactive act, um, isotopes, they decay... Um, they turn into other particles. They can't predict when that'll happen for any single particle. But say they're right. Say everything is random. How do you have free will if everything's random? That's the point. That's We're the key point. We're here to free will. I don't give a crap about, you know, how does that prove that everything is free, has free... If everything's random, what does that mean with our the topic at hand here. Right. First of all, like, you know, I, my, my personal perspective is that, you know, randomness, like, like I can ask you to pick out, like, I have, I have a deck of cards, pick a card at random. That's like kind of like a matter of speaking you know my personal take is there is no such thing as random because randomness means without a cause but literally random means like you know, if there's if causality is on the one side then the only alternative to causality is things not having a cause that's completely absurd but even if everything were random which is absurd right okay but even if <laughs> Everything were random, but we're not teaching that. But let's just say, how would that prove free will? I know, and that's that's what makes this so... It wouldn't. Know. It would be even worse. There would be no free will. Everything were random. You couldn't take credit. Or, or, I mean, if everything just happened randomly, then nobody's doing anything and controlling it. So the point is it doesn't prove free will, which is what they're trying to do and the, and the in the indeterminate model of quantum physics. Even if it were true, it wouldn't prove free will. I hear you. And the question becomes... If this is so clear, this is so obvious, and this is like I'm something... amazed we're even on this stage. This should have been done thousands of years. I mean, this is so ridiculous that people act. It's so preposterous to think you have a free will. It's like I know. I don't. know. You must, you must get a lot of unintelligent people in this on this world. They believe it. It's so obvious. All you have to do is rewind your life and look back at it. If you're over the age of forty, say, or even younger, you know that everything had to happen. How it you you couldn't do otherwise. You know that's the the great 
uh, debate of free will. They said you could have done otherwise. Exactly. I know I've looked back on my life. I don't want to say, oh, I'm in my 40s now. I mean, I couldn't have done otherwise based right. on what was happening at that time, my emotional, the pressures that were on me, financial, weather, whatever. I couldn't have done otherwise and everything. Exactly. So now I, don't longer, I no longer blame myself thanks to you know, when I learned about this. Absolution. I did a PSA on this um, channel a while back. Public service oh, amount okay. announcement. It had the, the, the title, Absolution. I mean, because like in Christianity and religions, like you kind of like you ask for forgiveness and stuff, right? Or you, but like with this, this is even better because like with this, there's nothing to forgive. In other words, it makes us completely innocent. Getting back to the, the topic... Fundamentally of, innocent, right. Fundamentally, yeah, because we, we have to assume responsibility. We can't do whatever we want, but, you know, this is important. Well, you can do whatever you want. You'll probably end up in jail, so go ahead. You know, to, <laughs> use, right. If you use the no free will excuse, you're going to end up in very bad places. If that's all right with you, then that, you're pre, predetermined and conditioned to end up in these places. You might like it. I don't know. All right, Everyone's we got, conditioned differently. We got about two minutes left. And um, I just want to, yeah, so how is it that people have gotten this wrong for so long? Very good book. I don't know. <laughs> I'll, t I'll, I'll have a guess. I'll have a guess of this. All right. There are, I think, two kinds of, like, thinking that go on in the world. One is, like, a lot of people have very, very good memories. So they go to school and they memorize whatever, like, they read, whatever the teacher tells them and all the professor. And then when it comes to the test, they just, like, remember and recite what, what's learned. Okay? That's... That's what I think most people, that the kind of What their parents taught them or what right. they modeled. Right. Parents, you, you learn more from your parents, not what they say, but what they act. All right. Because talk all right. is cheap. Action, okay, okay, so you see your parents act a certain way and they talk the, about The other will, kind you know? of intelligence is not, it doesn't rely so much on memory. This is kind of the intelligence that I have more of. It's like understanding what's being said. Yes. And that's the yes. thing. So like these philosophers, these scientists who claim that there's a free will – understanding that both causality and random make, us, make it impossible, you know, they don't get that. Because, like, basic logic isn't taught in school as much as it should be. That's, that's the only explanation I can come up with. Could you? I think that people are hedonic creatures and like to feel good about themselves, and it feels better up until now because it's going to start feeling worse. But for all these thousands of years, it felt better for people to believe they had a free will. To feel like you're in control is a much more pleasant feeling than not feeling you have a, however we're arguing that the truth is much better feeling than lot, being living in a fantasy and illusion world illusionary world so and also it's much better because it's less envy less anger you know you don't hate yourself you don't commit suicide you don't get so we're teaching that you actually feel better not believing in free will that's what's going to win exactly is, or, imagine a, w a world without blame without guilt it's going to be a much better world just pragmatic right. blame and guilt not severe emotional blame absolutely blame, yeah. all right this is george ortega and anel vale for Peace. exploring illusion of free will we'll be back again with more ways of under of helping you understand free. how free will is an illusion <laughs> thanks